Hello, my name is Sarah, I am Shiny Crochet and this is my channel. I'm going to spend today making a, another upcycle t-shirt just like this one. This one I made back in February of 2020 using a band shirt that I had from oh, too many years ago. So I made it better and added crochet, making it very unique. I get so many comments on this shirt. So I want to show you how I did it and also get me some more t-shirts that fit. I do want to preface this with, I don't know a whole lot about sewing. I don't know a whole lot about making clothes, particularly tops. So I kind of won most of this and did my best to make it wearable. If you have any feedback, if you have any suggestions on how I can do this better, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. The other thing I want to mention is I do have a blog out about this particular shirt, the making of it. So if you prefer a blog format or you want to check out how this one was made, then head over to blog.shinycrochet.com, which will take you through all the photos of along the, each of the steps. But for those that find a video a bit easier to follow or want to know how I did better on the second one, this is the video for you. So the main things that I'm going to be using today is an old t-shirt, some yarn. So the yarn that I'm using is actually Milan's cotton yarn. Eight ply cotton yarn of some kind will be best. Um, a four millimeter crochet hook, and then some way to cut up the shirt. The method I'm going to be using is using a rotary cutter with both a straight blade and a skip stitch blade. Essentially all that this is, is a circle that has little notches taken out, so it's only going to cut every now and then. This is the one that I use for cutting the holes into the edge of the shirt for where I'm going to crochet into. You can also use an awl or a small crochet hook or a needle. Whatever works for you, just try and keep them as consistent to each other as possible so it's going to be nice and straight. You can also just use standard scissors instead of a rotary cutter for cutting up the shirt. You may need some sewing pins um, or some kind of clips to help with where the seams are going to go. Otherwise, oh, and a measuring tape. You will need a measuring tape. Uh, if you're using a rotary cutter, you will need a cutting board thing. This is my handy dandy little one. It's not particularly big. It only goes up to 17 inches, but I do find that it's enough to get me started. Later I might look at getting a larger one, but this does the job for the moment. And I think that's it. I suppose chalk, or whatever you want to use to mark on the shirt. We'll figure it out as we go along. Maybe I'll do a new section of this later. Okay, that's my introduction. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the shenanigans of what we're going to be doing today. See you soon. The next shirt is going to come from the box. Every crafter has a box or six of future projects. I have an entire box of just t-shirts. Actually, I think I have two. I'm starting with this box. So I have this box of t-shirts, which is a mix of nerd shirts from T Fury, such as we've got a mix match of TARDIS and Guardians of the Galaxy, The Incredibles, but The Inconceivables, a wonderful Alice, XC shirt and so much more. I've got mental as anything from when I saw them for my 19th birthday. Desert Bus shirts. If you don't know of Desert Bus for Hope, you should go check them out. It's a annual charity that I sometimes get to participate in uh, to raise money for child's play and they do an annual t-shirt which is absolutely amazing and unique each year. I'm gonna kind of just ruffle through here. My Impersonate t-shirt, my Dark Knight shirt, my very, 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 very worn out Totoro Sari Nights shirt. This one's our favorite. It was bought too small because that was the only size they had at the convention I was at. <sighs> How am I meant to choose just one? Okay, okay. It's fine, everything is fine. This, this is the t-shirt I'm gonna go with. It's got tour dates and stuff on the back. It's got a giant monster face on the front because that was the year of dinosaur monster stuff. It's a bit worn. It's very gray. This is meant to be black. It is not black anymore. If we flip it over, this is from 2009. We are in the year 2021. So this shirt is 12 years old. Just doing a final check for any holes or reasons why I wouldn't want to continue wearing this. The fabric itself is a bit rough, but I'm not too fussed around that. This is most likely gonna be a bumming around the home shirt or going out for walks and such. And the sleeves will just go into my scrap bin. 
Okay, let's get preparing to cut this out. This one does not have side seams, so we'll need to be making them up as we go along. And the hem on one side has completely come apart. If using scissors with no side seam to follow, lay the shirt down flat, then pin along the created edge, leaving a gap of one or two inches to give room for the scissors, then cut down the folded edge. Lay this out flat. So this is the chalk that I'm going to use. It's one that I had on hand. I meant to use my standard chalk, but I couldn't find it. And all that I'm going to do is draw down the side. Okay, so we've now got a side seam all drawn on. We'll do it to the other side also. The way that I'm going to do this though, I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to insert the cutting mat inside of the shirt. So now that we've got this, it does mean that underneath is going to sit up off the table a little bit, but I don't mind that too much. This is the rotary cutter that I like to use and away we go. Continuing with the cutting mat inside of the shirt. Still inside. Coming as close to this edge as I can. There is the lump from the seam underneath. That comes across. It's gonna go straight across here. And that's one side done. Now continuing to keep the mat underneath. I'm just rotating the shirt around. Straightening all of that out, making sure that there's no other fabric underneath that I can feel. So we have the front piece of the shirt with a funny little sleeve shape, but the back still has sleeves and we don't want that. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the other side. Laying this flat, making sure all the fabric from the other side is out of the way, keeping your fingers nice and clear. That sleeve comes off, goes into the pin. Depending on the type of seam that you have here, you may be able to get away with um, keeping that in some way, but I didn't want to worry about it too much on this one. So we have a back of a shirt, but now we have all these raw edges all the way around. Do a single seam with my sewing machine and away we go. <sighs> okay, my body is telling me I have to sit down. So, it's time to sit down. Oh, unfortunately my chair and this table don't quite play nicely when I use it like this, but I'll make do. I'm going to start with the front piece of the shirt using a whole lot of pins. I'm going to first fix this hem. deep enough that I can use my sewing machine along this edge but not so much that I take too much for the print. Pin. This seam here can be a little bit narrower because it's not going to be um, taking any crochet, but I'm going to start off with a similar depth and then work up from there. I need to actually fold this down lower because I want the neckline to be less of a U shape and more straight across with the shoulders coming up away from it. I'm going to be a bit of a rebel 
You can do a little bit more planning than me. Looking at the markings on the side of the table, I'm lining the ruler up with them, lining up with the edge of this to be kind of consistent. And now that I've got that there, I'm going to use this, pull my needle down. As I was saying before, you'll need to be mindful when doing this that you're not going to get too close to the print here because once I fold this over, I'm probably going to end up cutting straight across this print. But at the neckline itself, I'm not going to be crocheting all the way along the neck. And instead, I'm just going to be up from the side. So here is just going to be a seam and then the shoulder is going to come across from here. So I'm going to be a little bit dodgy. I'm going to make the seam allowance deeper on the sides and at the neckline, I'm going to make it a little bit shallower, which is going to make it a bit easier to not overhang the sewing line through the white because I am going to use black thread. So I'm going to fold that bit over first. Now to keep them nice and the same, I start on the edge again. pins are all in. Okay, so I guess the next step is sewing. You can do this by hand if you want to. I'm going to use my sewing machine just because it's going to be a bit faster. I did grab a piece of the scrap fabric and did some tension testing because I did find that it was causing some scrunching. It also meant that I made sure that all of the thread was fully ran properly because I don't really want to be fighting with that while working with stretchy fabric. So that's going to go back over there. Hopefully I haven't messed with anything in the process of resetting you up, but let's get my other camera going. And now I can show you what we're doing. So my machine's just down here. I've got the pieces here. So I'm gonna start with the front piece just cause that was the first one I picked up. Lining her up. Let's do this. Anyone else get terrified in that first instance before you start sewing? The way that I found this to work the best is I'm holding onto this very back bit and pulling it out as I go, which is helping keeping the tension along this thread and pulling it through to the back. I finally got it. I'm not getting any warping, not getting the scrunching effect. So that side of the back is now done. And now I can do the other side.
from my mistakes and do the back seam first because you're gonna mess that one up most. That's all the machine sewing to be done. So I'm gonna put this away, switch that out and get my cutting board back out because then we're going to add the crochet holes. This is the rotary cutter that I've got. So at the moment it's got the sander blade on it. Obviously I don't want to use that. So along these edges where we're going to be doing crochet, we're going to run this along. You'll want to essentially line it up in a way that once you start, you go from one edge all the way to the other. If you're needing to pause and rearrange, it can get tricky to make sure that you're not going to create two holes against each other, making essentially a longer hole. At least my cutting mat is about the size of the t-shirt. I'm not going to need to move this as I go along. We want to keep as consistent and straight as possible just because that way it's going to look tidier once we're attaching the final pieces. And then I'm going to start rolling it along. Getting it going is always that little bit tricky and where you're most likely to actually just run straight off the edge. I'm very sorry if my camera is wobbling all over the place. And now along the top. So this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky because I don't actually want to run all the way from edge to edge. I want to kind of do it just where the shoulders are going to be. So what I'm going to do is use a ruler and some chalk. A handy dandy chalk. A handy dandy ruler. And so that's where I want to stop. And the same on the other side. So you can do more or less as you want to, um, as long as your shoulders will match up, because um, otherwise it will end up looking a little bit lopsided. And what I might actually do is I'm going to also use the ruler as a block. So if I insert this here, that last one is really hard to do without potentially creating one that I don't want. I'm actually going to start on the chalk side. I'm just confirming that I got that first hole where I wanted it to. And now down, down the sides. So I'm aiming to be smack bang between the sewn edge and the hem of the fabric. And that way there's a fair chunk of fabric available for the crochet to go over the top of. all of our holes in uh, we're good to start planning out the crochet so now we get into some maths so what I've done here is just noted down my measurements at my waist at my hips and at my bust what I am expecting is the area that I know that the shirt is the tightest is on my hips because it is a men's shape shirt so I'm going to start off with that that's the minimum size I need to add and then once I've got that one right, I'll then check what the measurements will be once I add that amount to the chest as well. It'll make sense in a second, hopefully. So next I need to figure out how big the shirt and the, uh, the shirt front and the shirt back are. Using the bottom of the shirt, I have 45 centimeter. Now we've ended up with the 45 and 45 equals 90. So that's how wide the shirt would be if they were to exactly reconnected. So if I go the hips measurement of 117 centimeters minus 90 centimeters gives me a difference of 27 centimeters, which means that I need to add a total of 27 centimeters. Keeping in mind, this is going to be stretchy and it is going to relax over time. But if I go 27 divided by two, equals 13 and a half. So what that has given me is when I'm crocheting and I'm making these side panels, let me just do a little sandy of it. When I'm doing these side panels, I want to aim for 13 centimeters wide. And so what I'm then going to do is do those same measurements and work backwards the other way for the chest and for the waist. 
And so what that means, I know that I need to get to 98 centimeters at the waist point of the shirt and I need to get to 115 with the chest part of the shirt. At the bust area, which is the line where the, the armpit was, I'm going to measure across there, again using centimeters. So armpit to armpit, I'm looking at about the same, so it's 44 centimeters. So what I'm doing here is 44 times two gets 88 centimeters. So that's the size of the shirt as is, plus the 27 centimeters plan to be added of crochet will get me to a total of 115, which this was for the chest and what do you know? And then for the hips, so if I measure out at the hips, it is 42 centimeters. So if I go 42 centimeters times two equals 84 plus 27 equals 111 and 111 is larger than 98 which means that this will fit me. Huzzah! Now that we've got the maths all right we'll start crocheting and so this maths is all based on how the side panels are going to behave. I'm then going to try it on to figure out how I want the sleeves to be. Let's do the side panels and get going. What I'm going to do is I like the look of working from the front of the shirt backwards. But what that means is I then need to be able to attach that crochet panel to the back panel. So I'm going to actually start crocheting onto the back panel first by doing the base row and then we're going to put that one off to the side. Then we'll do the crochet on the front panel and that kind of gives us the allowance that's going to be added by the base row on the back. So as I said, I'm going to use a four millimeter hook. You can dry an arrow a little bit to figure out what works best for you. And I'm going to keep my little scissors and needles. This is on the back panel first. So we've got my starting thread, which is attached to the ball of yarn. I've got my four millimeter hook and let's get going. So I start just as if I was changing color on a normal piece. I did find that the first time I was doing this, trying to find that initial hole is a little bit tricky. But once you have that first one, the rest of them kind of are a little bit easier. So loop the yarn over and pull through, loop both over and pull through. You don't need to loop both of them over. Generally, you only need to loop one, but I find that it just creates a bit more of a sturdy point. Trying to keep it pretty loose. I'm going to pull that through a little bit more, find the next hole, yarn over and pull through. So we're just doing some basic single crochet all the way along. So if as you're going along, you find this fabric is curling in on itself, then you're crocheting too tight and you need to undo it, loosen it and try again. If it's really bunching up, you could otherwise just do a chain between each, just as long as you're doing it consistently. And when you do the front and the side, uh, the side panels on both the front and the back, you do them the exact same. your count of stitches is going to depend on how large your shirt is, your hook size, your yarn size. And so you're just going to work all the way along being mindful not to skip one of the stitches. And if you do, just go back and fix it up. All right, so we've gotten to the very edge and we've got our first crochet line. And so at this point, I am going to slip stitch, pull tight, and then one final knot. You can tie off however you find most comfortable. But this is just the way I do it. 
We're not going to sew in the ends right now because there's nothing really to sew them into. So that's one side there. Now let's do the other side. But doing the exact same thing. So now that we have the base done on the front and the back, we're going, uh, rather, on both sides of the back, just like that. We're going to put this piece off to the side and start working on the, on one of the sides of the front piece. So out with the back of the shirt, in with the front of the shirt. Creating a U with the yarn, inserting the hook into the first stitch. Pull through, yarn over, pull through. Keeping your tension nice and loose or as tight as you need to. So this time, rather than tying off, we're actually going to do some chains, turn our work, and then work back along this way, starting to do some granny stitches. I've just done two chain tall. So I'm going to count that as one stitch. You can either just start working across and hope for the best. I'm going to count how many stitches I have because the granny stitch is usually worked in groups of three. And so I need to figure out how I want to group them. Um, and the way that I'm going to do them is just three, then skip two stitches, three, skip two stitches, three. So what I'm hoping for is that this base row is a multiple of three, or I can offset it as needed and just do a chain to square off the edges. Okay, 39, 40. 41. 41 isn't divisible by 3. That's 42. So on this row what I'm going to do is skip a stitch at the start and then I'll skip a stitch near the end to then do a single DC to make it square and then when I build up I'll then do a group of three straight away and then I'll kind of alternate that back and forth. So at this stage I finished this bottom row. I've done a chain two. I'm going to chain three, yarn over, I'm going to skip that first stitch and come into this second one and do one double crochet, which is a yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And now I'm going to do a third double crochet, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over. So I've got a group of three there. I'm going to skip two stitches. And the reason I skip two stitches is because I've just done three in one. And so if I did more in this next one directly, it's going to make this bridge too wide. And instead I want to skip two to count for the two extra and then do another three in the next stitch.
So it worked out a little differently than I planned, but that's okay. If you got to this point and you found that there was still a single stitch left on the edge, you can then just do a double crochet down to it as needed. Um, if there were two spaces, then you would do an extra chain and then DC down to it. And then once you chain up to do your next row, you would do your first double crochet directly into that first grouping of three into that first bit. And instead what I'm going to do, because I've finished this stitch at the same point as this first stitch from the row below, I'm actually going to do my double crochet directly up and that's going to count as a DC. And then I'm going to start working back in this other stitch. We're going to turn our work. I've only done a single chain at this stage. I will do two more chains to match the start of the last row, then double crochet in the gap on the row below. Yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And two more into that same stitch. Continue this pattern along to the end. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where I've now got to the end of here and I don't have a full space here, but I'm still going to treat it as if it's a normal 3DC space. And then I'm going to chain two. And then before I turn the work, I want to take a moment and just double check that all of my counts are okay, that it's not doing anything too weird. If I had the shirt laying flat, but this section was all wavy like this, that could potentially mean that you're doing too many stitches compared to how much fabric there is. And that's where you may need to either go down a hook or figure out how to do less stitches in each of your spaces. If on the other hand, you find that this is curving in on itself and it's there's not enough there, that could mean that your hook is too small, your yarn is too small, or you're crocheting too tightly. So there's not a lot that you can do to fix that at this stage. You would need to undo and try again, adjusting one thing at a time. So rather than going, I'm going to increase my hook and I'm going to increase my yarn and I'm going to crochet looser. And suddenly you end up with it three times as big. Instead, change just your hook size or change your yarn or change your tension. If you try and do it all at once, you're just going to end up having to try it a third time and a fourth time. One thing at a time in stages until something feels right. Mine is curving in just a little bit, but I don't think it's actually going to be a problem. I think it's just the way that the shirt is slightly structured. But I do think I need to stay mindful of my tension and not get too tight. because Some of these early ones are a little bit tight compared to what I would like them to be. What I'm going to do is actually take a moment to measure how much this has added so far. Where I measured on the shirt before is actually from the edge of the shirt. So I need to be measuring from the edge of the shirt also. Yeah, it's not going to get too finicky because it's all stretchy, but I at least want to see what's happening. So at this stage, I have two and a half centimeters or one inch. So I'm going to need to do another, I'm too tired for this. Let's do another row. I'm going to measure again and then that'll tell me for sure. Your number of rows will be determined by that maths that we went through earlier. And let's go. As with before, I just chain high enough and then I'm going to start doing my crochet directly into this first gap. Um, I'm not going to do anything extra into this granny stitch.
at the end we finish with three crochet and it, because at the start we skip a grouping and that's how we keep it all consistent. If again you're experiencing any bunching in at the sides or you're experiencing warping that means that it's either too small or if the latter then it, there's too much going on and you need to try again with less. I'm going to pause here, finish to the length that I need to and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the front of the shirt and then I'm going to show you the progress. I'm back. I have crocheted a whole lot of bits. If we measure, yes, I ended up with 12 and a half centimeters. Um, and the goal that we're going for was 13 and a half centimeters. Once we add on the fact that this top section is going to get sewn onto the lip of the other, that's going to another, add another half centimeter or so. I'm happy with that. At this point, you can either cut a really long tail and then we'll be using that to sew it onto the back piece or you can cut a standard length tail that this will get sewn in then. You'll use just a standalone thread. I didn't think about that when I did the opposite side. So this was the first one that I did. And so this has ended up with just a standard tail. So this will get sewn in and I'll cut a long thread when I'm then sewing that onto the back piece. For this one, I am going to cut a long tail. And essentially when I'm going to cut a tail for sewing, what I do is I actually go the length of what I'm going to sew times two and a bit. Lining up the bottom with the bottom, the top with the top. So starting with the long tail, lining these two up. And I'm kind of working backwards, which is a very weird sensation, but let's not go with it. So I'm inserting the needle through the top layer coming through the bottom layer and pulling the yarn through. Going to the next stitch and then the next stitch on the next. And this is all that I'm doing all the way up. You don't want to pull it very tight because as you can see, that's just going to cause it to bunch up. You just want it to be together. So onto the next stitch. So I'm not sure where the camera cut out. I've got a long tail remaining. I'm going to cheat and use the fact that we have these lovely little sleeves of fabric existing in here. I'm going to turn it inside out. So this is where my tail is coming out of and I'm going to bring it through here. I'm going to wrap it back around again, locking the yarn, the, the needle through the yarn which is going to create a nice sturdy knot, which is less likely to come undone. And then I'm going to bring it down towards this. And now I'm going to send it into one of the holes. making sure that it hasn't come through on the opposite side. I'm gonna bring it up and out. I'm going to loop it around this to create a knot. Then I'm gonna send it in again. Again, I'm feeling on the opposite 
inside and making sure that it is inside of that sleeve. And then I'm just going to bring it out again and then cut that tail off. I'm going to do that with all the other ones. I'm not going to worry about trying it on camera. I'll come back to that a bit later. And for now, I'm first going to sew the opposite side here. Starting the same way as I did on the other side from the bottom up, because that's the easiest way to make sure I don't end up with wonky edges. I don't have a long tail available on this one because I cut it short. I'm going to cut a thread of yarn going the length of this. And again, plus a little bit. So that's all threaded as an all needle would be because I need to tie on. Just going to bring the needle in here. I'll sew in the end properly later. said I'll sew in the other tails a bit later. You should take a moment sew in your tails now because it's going to be more of a butts later. So I have pinned this on myself just using some little plastic clippies. Plastic clippies. But this is where we're going to be crocheting along next. I've confirmed that this fits well. It's got that bit more room which is really nice and comfortable. It's nice and breathy. This I'm not too sure about. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe later I'll come through and remove it. The collar bit is what I'm referring to, but the front is looking pretty good. Using sanded measuring tape, measuring from that shoulder seam that exists to the top of this one. That is looking like 10 or 11 centimeters. Just like I did with the side panels, I'm actually going to single crochet along the back panel first. Yarn through, or oh, hook through, yarn over, pull through, pull through drop the starting tail and then single crochet across. So now I'm going to tie off. Again, from the front, we're going to start from just below the collar since that's what I did here, and we'll work back along that one. shoulder seams on the back piece ready to go. Start on whichever shoulder you want to. Okay so chain and chain two. I kind of make it up as I go along with these stitch. You can either force to add or remove stitches as you need to to make it even. Yarn over because we're going to create a double crochet. So insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, chain two. And this is what creates the V. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, skip two stitches, which counts as the chain two that you just did. Insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Chain two, yarn over, into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, skip two stitches, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Chain two, Yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. 
and then we're going to yarn over and just like at the very beginning here we're going to have this post to hold it all together and then chain two and what I'm going to do is take a moment now to look at how many stitches I've got here versus how many are on the back piece so that I can decide how I want to do my increases to make sure that there's enough stitches to cover the back later. So if I look at these, I can see that I've got 10 versus 15. So looking at how high one row is, it seems to be roughly one centimeter, maybe a little more, but I'm going to count it as one centimeter for this, which means that I'm going to do a total of five rows of V stitch between here and there. I'm going to do the first three rows, including the one I've already done without any increases. And then I'll do the last two with increases because they're gonna be quite close to the back at that point, And they'll start closing off that area. If you're having to do a really long piece for whatever reason, test and see how long works for you. It really depends on your shirt, your yarn, the way that you crochet. So I'm going to write down one row equals one centimeter ish. Therefore five rows. So I yarn over and I start my next V stitch. So the V stitch begins by going inside of the V stitch from the row below. So I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, chain two, yarn over, insert into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over into the next V stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, chain two, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over into that mini V that was created by the starting post and complete another double crochet. So we're going to do chain two. This is roughly the same height again, but once you're actually wearing it, it's going to stretch quite a lot. Okay, so onto row three. Okay, yarn over, insert into the first V, yarn over, pull through, and etc. So it's exactly the same as row two. Okay, so that's three rows completed. I know that I'm only wanting to do another two rows so that I can get my total 10 centimeters in shoulder length. So the next two rows are going to have a bit of an increase because I'm at 10 stitches now and I want to be at 15 stitches. So I'm going to work back along this way and then when I get on this inside bit, because this is where the neck is, that's where I'm going to start putting the increases in. So let's do that. And I yarn over, insert. So I do the first couple of V's exactly the same as previously. Okay, so this is where things will get different. In this final one, I'm going to do another V, chain two. So that's all the same. In this last bit though, where I previously did one stitch, I'm actually going to do another entire V in there. So I do one, I chain two, yarn over, insert into the same stitch, and then increase. So now I'm going to turn over. So at this point, I have done a chain two. I'm actually going to chain another one, just for good measure, two. And then I'm going to yarn over and do a V stitch in this first one. And what those first two those extra chains are going to do is make that first DC act as more of its own stitch so that I can spread it out further when attaching onto the back piece. And then my final DC into here. In theory, that's going to be all that I need to do for the shoulder strap on this side. I'm going to take a moment and write out what I did. down that I'll need to do something slightly different but this is what I did on shoulder one 
and then I'll need to do the same but flipped on shoulder two. And then I chain two. And now I do two rows of V stitch. Coming up out of here, this is actually on this side, by comparison, a V stitch to begin. So I'm going to, I've done this first DC technically. Now I'm going to do a chain two to represent that chain two, and then I'm going to uh, do a DC straight back into that, and then I'll work back through as normal. Great. So it's almost the same, just flipped which row I do what. So chain two, insert into there, yarn over, pull through, chain two. No, I don't need to chain two because I've already done my chain two. That was the V stitch. So that is equal to this. So now I yarn over and into the next stitch. And now I do the reverse of the pattern on this row the same. The start of this stitches, uh, the start of this row is the same. So before I tie off completely, I'm just going to give a quick look, and I'm pretty happy with that. They're not identical, but they're not horribly different either. So, yeah, so they're about the same. I've got all the increases on the inside on this side. Um, this is nice and straight, which is very nice, and they're laying pretty flat. So I'm going to tie that off. Some handy dandy sewing clips, making sure it's in the right way. I'm just going to hold them together, pull that nice and straight, and then pin those bits together. Fantastic. So they're all clipped together. So now it is essentially a shirt. It just needs sewing, but I'm going to try it on. It is a little snug when I'm pulling it over my head, but otherwise I think that this is sitting pretty well perfectly. It's covering my bra at about the right point. It's sitting okay at the shoulder. It's going to line up and pull that into a nice straight line. Unfortunately, the size of this print and where it sits meant that I wasn't able to make this as low as I would like. On a different shirt, it, its print would normally only come up to about here, and that's where I'd be able to fold this down even more and have the longer straps. For this one, I'm okay with this. I think that this looks quite good. I'm happy. Now I've got to sew it and then sew in all of my ends. So I'm going to cut a fairly long tail, so I'm hoping that I can use the one tail on both. Cut that off, and away we go. all done so I'm going to bring this yarn down and through and I'm actually just going to cut this off here and I'll sew on the tail at the end just like the other side
So I've sewed in the ends and then fell sick for a week, which has been great. But here I am at last getting to show off the shirt. Isn't it great? I love it. I'm so happy with how it turned out. And to discuss some of the areas that I think I can improve on now that it's finished. Because it's been a whole year since I made the last one, it was a little hard to remember where I could improve on from the base pattern. So I'm hoping you watch this through and then decide to make your own rather than just watching it as you go and making it as you go. Um, but if so, I'm sorry if you made the mistakes that I did. The two main things that I want to improve on are along the neck here. It's sitting just a little bit high up. I'm hoping once I've put this through the washing machine, it's going to sit a little bit lower because he's going to be relaxed out a little bit more. And the other thing is just fixing up the back of the neck. So because the collar piece is still there, it's kind of sitting up a little bit higher to where the shoulders are. And that looks a little bit strange. So I'm going to essentially fold that down and sew that in place by hand. I don't trust that my sewing machine is going to do any kind of a good job at holding that down without bunching up or putting thread everywhere and probably just going to die if I do that. As much as I don't like my sewing machine, it's the one I have. So it's a fantastic machine. I'm planning a few more videos like this one, including adding a cute crochet trim to the bottom of a circle skirt. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in checking that out. Okay, have a lovely day.